Welcome to Crossroads Church and to the celebration of life of Max Willis. I'm Pastor Deb Marzon, Executive Pastor of Crossroads, and Pastor Paul Marzon will be giving our message today. Let us begin. Dying, Christ destroyed our death. Rising, Christ restored our life. Christ will come again in glory as in baptism, Max put on Christ. And so in Christ, may Max be clothed with glory. Here now, dear friends, we are God's children. What we shall be has not yet been revealed. But what we know is that when he appears and reappears, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. Those who have this hope purify themselves as Christ is pure. Friends, we've gathered here today to praise God, but to witness also to our faith and to the life, the celebration of life of Maxwell A. Willis. We come together in grief, acknowledging our human loss. And may God grant us grace that in pain we find comfort, and in sorrow hope, and in death resurrection. Please join me in prayer. Dear holy and awesome God, we come to you today with heavy hearts as we mourn the loss of one that we love so much. We ask, Lord, that you would be present with us in our times of grief and sorrow and that you would be with us and all those who mourn this day. Comfort our pain, encourage our hearts, and help us to believe in the promises and the hope of your grace and resurrection. We acknowledge all that we have is given and that you have given us is yours. As first you gave Max to us, so now we give Max back to you. Receive him into your arms of your mercy. Raise him up with all your people. And receive us also, raise us into a new life. Help us to love and to serve in this world, that we may enter the joy of the world to come. Amen. The family has chosen the next song as one for you to listen to. Max liked country music, so listen to Vince Gill. This is a part in the service where we like to open the mic up to anybody who would like to share any stories, any remembrances um, about Max. And Max's sister, Mandy, has offered to be brave and go first. So with that, Mandy, if you'd like to come up to the mic. of you who don't already know me, I am Max's sister Mandy, and whether you're joining us here today in person or sending your love from afar and viewing on the live stream, I'd like to thank you all for making my family a priority in your lives today as we support one another in honoring the memory of my brother Max. We know far too well the countless burdens of life that are carried every day, and whether it be work, health, or financial worries, I am immensely grateful that Max's memory isn't being overshadowed by any of these stresses today. When we learned the devastating news of Max's passing and began preparations for his memorial service here today, there was no doubt in my mind that I wanted to get up here and speak in honor of my little brother. And as I thought about what I wanted to share, the words flowed almost too easily from my mind to paper, or onto my screen, rather, as I typed out my thoughts. And as I continued to draft what I would share with all of you today, I began receiving the most lovely, heartwarming stories from all of you, our family and friends stories that brought a smile to my face, smiles, stories that brought tears to my eyes, and stories that brought my heart relief from the hurt that it's been enduring. 
So today, I'd like to try and offer you the same relief that so many of you have provided me with, even if for just a brief moment, as we honor Max's memory today. Like most siblings, my brother and I, we fought a, a lot growing up, a lot. Uh, we constantly antagonized each other, both of us trying to see how far we could push the other until eventually we would get into trouble. And mom's solution to combat our bickering was to make us stand at the end of the driveway, hugging each other for however long our shenanigans permitted while our neighbors watched, amused, from their windows at the request of my mother. Naturally, Max hated every second of having to show affection to his sister in public, which I found amusing. So in an attempt to spoil my joy, he would wrap his little arms so tightly around me, squeezing to make me as comfortable or uncomfortable as he possibly could at times nearly taking the breath from me as he held on for as long as he could and with all of the might that he could muster. And this went on every time we had to stand at the end of the driveway and hug. And as we got older, these driveway punishments just kind of dwindled away, but the suffocating hugs persisted with Max, oftentimes even trying to lift me from the ground, and these hugs eventually became our regular meeting, um, and they were something that I had come to look forward to when I knew that I get to see Max after some time apart. So I have to say that I am so grateful for all of those forced hugs at the end of the driveway and what they eventually became for Max and I and what I would give for just one more today. As we reflect and share these memories with one another, we find that we knew a different side of Max from different times throughout his life. And when we piece them together, we begin to feel closer and find comfort in getting to know him a little bit better. Max's life ended far too soon, and there's no doubt about that. But together we can keep his memory alive so that his daughter, Nova, can someday feel as though she has known a part of who her father was as well. From the boisterous child to the Marine and the loving man that he had become. And before I wrap things up, I just want to say once more, thank you all for your love, for your support, your prayers, and your many kind words. It has helped my family get through this past week, and they will continue to carry us as we heal from our loss moving forward. And Sarah, I know how much, how much Max loved and cared for you deeply. And when you look at Nova, I hope that you can find comfort in being able to see him in her features. And may his love and the happy memories that you shared get you through this difficult time. Thank you. Anybody else think of something they'd like to say, a remembrance, a story? I can make it easier for you. I can come out to you. How's that? Hi, um, my name is Gary Cuddlecamp. I was close to Max growing up. Um, our parents worked together and kind of got thrust into his life and he was a little brother I, I didn't know I needed. And we always were beating up on each other. I always won because I had about a foot and 60 pounds on him, so it wasn't really fair. But today I'm going to share a poem. There's a button down there that Max felt close to his heart. Do not stand at my grave and weep. I am not there. I do not sleep. I am a thousand winds that blow. I am the diamond glints on snow. I 
am the sunlight on ripened grain. I am the gentle autumn rain. When you awaken in the morning's hush, I am the swift, uplifting rush. Of quiet birds in circled flight, I am the soft stars that shine at night. Do not stand at my grave and cry. I am not there. I did not die. Thank you. Of you that don't know me, I'm Stacy's sister, Carrie hugged it. For those of you that don't know me, and I sent a couple of stories to Mandy that she'll share with the family. But I did want to just share a really quick um, moment um, last night in the parking lot of the hotel that we were staying at. Um, we were saying goodbye to um, Tyler and Kaylee as they were traveling to Lake Bill to their hotel. And I was talking to Kaylee, and Kaylee turned around. And she said, where did that come from? And I turned around like this and went like this. And into my hand, like it was placed, was an orange balloon. Just one single orange balloon, very similar to the color all of you are wearing. Kaylee said, where did that come from? Darwin said, look at the color. We know where it came from. I know I haven't gotten the pleasure of meeting many of you, um, but I'm Sarah, Max's wife. He had a lot of family and a lot of friends he considered family, so it means a lot probably that you're all here. I wasn't sure if I was going to be able to share this. Um, a couple days ago, I went to where his truck was found. <clears throat> Along the way, I got lost. And I didn't know where to turn. Um, uh, an eagle came down in front of his truck and uh, flew in front of me for about a mile and then turned, so I, I followed it. And I found where I was going. So I, I, don't, I don't know, if you see any eagles, probably, you know, he had a thing for them, you know. <laughs> yeah, thank you all for coming. Any other stories, remembrances? See if I can read this without crying through the whole thing, but <coughs> I'm Max's Uncle Scott. Uh, where do we start with Max? Maximum as I always thought of him. <laughs> From family weekends at Bill and Ginger's at the lake. Uh, some of my other best memories is Max spent the a week at our house for the county fair. And uh, you have to remember, Max grew up in the cities. And uh, that was pretty much me 30 some years ago. I grew up in the cities. Coming to a, a county fair is like the funnest thing ever. Uh, she would wake, wake the boys up to go to the fair in the morning to go clean the clean feed and wash the pigs and the cows. Of course, Cole and Kyle had to be pried out of bed. Not Max, he popped his head right up out of the top bunk, ready to go. He wasn't scared to dive right in, cleaning pens, washing 
and feeding the animals. That was a good summer. Another memory that sticks in my head is our family snowmobile trip. Uh, Stacy Bryan, Mandy Max, Sheila and me, going Kyle. <laughs> We did mostly trail riding because uh, Max rode with Brian and Kyle rode with me. But one day we ventured towards Black Mountain where we found a nice open meadow and let the kids ride around in the powder. Remembering Max wasn't super tall, so it was awesome seeing riding around on Brian's Polaris, barely able to see all the handlebars. <laughs> They were having a blast. Now fast forward to now, this metal happens to be right across the highway from our cabin. Every time I cross this metal, this will always be Max's metal. <laughs> The snowmobile trip was uh, Max's senior year. He came with me and Cole and Kyle and some other friends. It was just a fun trip before he joined the Marines. Another funny memory I have is of Max is that I work overnights once in a while and drive to the Twin Cities. <laughs> and none of my trucker buddies were answering their phones, so I'm thinking Max is five or six hours ahead or behind me, so at two in the morning, it isn't that late. I'll give Max a call and see what he's up to. I don't really remember what I talked to him about, but I'm really glad I did now. Thank you. Family is inviting you all to stay for lunch afterwards, and um, it'll be an opportunity to share more stories with those around the table. These stories are the legacy of a man you all knew and loved, and he will live on through those stories. So continue to share them with each other, okay? And with that, Sarah, you mentioned Eagles, and the next song is a song that uh, has been chosen called On Eagle's Wings. There's a peace I've come to know Though my heart and flesh may fail There's 
Pastor Paul, and, um, I have a phrase I share that sometimes is easier to say at weddings or Sunday mornings than it is at funerals, but the phrase is true nonetheless. I will say God is good, and you say all the time, God is good, and all the time, God is good. And when I say that at funerals, it's sometimes harder because we're going through a tremendous loss, and yet the truth still remains in spite of what we're going through, we have a God who loves us. In spite of our pain, 
and in spite of our sorrows. The scripture I'd like to read to you for today is based a little bit on the song that you just heard called On Eagle's Wings. There's two main scriptures in the Old Testament where God is referenced as the understanding of an eagle. The first is in Exodus chapter 19, verses 3 through 5. Then Moses went up to God, and the Lord called him from the mountain and said, This is what you are to say to the descendants of Jacob, what you are to tell to the people of Israel. You yourselves have seen what I did to Egypt and how I carried you on eagles' wings, and I brought you to myself. Now if you obey me and keep my promises, then of all the nations you will be my treasured possession. In Deuteronomy chapter 32, this description is listed up, lifted up again shortly before they enter into the promised land. It says, in a desert land he found him, in a barren and howling waste. The eagle shielded him and cared for him. He guarded him as the apple of his eye, like an eagle that stirs up its nest and hovers over its young and spreads its wings to catch them and carries them aloft. May God bless the reading and the understanding of his holy word. Today I'd like to talk a little about the symbol of the eagle and understanding what it makes a marine because I think that reflects much of the character of Max who we're celebrating this day. The symbol of the eagle is a universal symbol of freedom and hope. Freedom and hope. In the passages I just read, the Israelites were traveling through a barren wasteland and they needed the understanding of hope. They were going to be wandering for 40 years in the wilderness. They're going to go through trials and tribulations, times when they didn't have enough water, not enough food. But God reminded them that he would never leave them. Even when they felt like he wasn't there, he was there. And the symbol, the eagle, was one of those symbols that he left them. As the scriptures describe, it describes the first one where the eagle is watching over them, basically covering them with the shadow of his wings. In other words, saying that they know that he's above them, hovering over, watching over, protecting, and caring. Now, I don't know if you realize this, um, but Crossroads has its own eagle. It lives sometimes by our pond and fishes by our pond, and then sometimes when I come over here, I'll see it fly like it did today on the top of the roof of this building. I know some of you have seen eagles since Max has passed away as well. And sometimes it's a universal understanding that sometimes God will send us the symbol of the eagle as a reminder that he's watching over us, that he is with us. The second symbol of the eagle that's used in scriptures is a little bit different. It's that of a mother pushing its young out of the nest. <laughs> now, if you think of that symbol, it's not quite as fun, is it? It's the mother saying, you know what, it's time. Time to move out, time to get your wings spread, time to figure this out on your own. So it says it stirs up its nest and it pushes the young eaglets out. But what's great about a young mother is it doesn't leave it to dash itself up below on the stones. It hovers behind it. And if an eaglet isn't quite ready to, to gather its own wings or to take flight, it swoops down. And it says it carries it on eagles' wings back to the safety of the nest. So we have a God that sometimes stirs us up, pushes us out of our comfort zone, but that same God also swoops down and carries us on himself to safety. The tension of those two symbols, hovering above and swooping below. It was shared with me shortly before I came in that there was one year ago today that Max was discharged from the military. Is that correct? One year. There's something symbolic about that as well. He was discharged from his time of service 
and now is being discharged once again. If you're not familiar with the Marine Corps, the Marine Corps has many slogans and models throughout the years. It's had a long and lustrous history, and it started way back before we were even a country, November 10th, 1775, before there was even the Declaration of Independence. There were the Marines. And over their years, the Marines have picked up nicknames like Devil Dog or Leatherneck. They've had other names more popular as well, but Semper Fidelis, the few, the proud, the Spreedy Corps, and of course the Marines' hymn to the famous eagle, the globe, the anchor emblem, and so many more. But Semper Fi, Fidelity, that name has stuck through the years. The model Semper Fidelis in 19, or excuse me, 1883 was added. The Latin phrase, the fortitude for courage, was emblazoned upon the brass plates worn by the Marines during the federal period. The second model is by sea and by land, taken from the British Royal Marines. And until 1848, the third model was to the shores of Tripoli, inscribed on the Marine Corps colors. In 1845, this was revised to from the halls of Montezuma, to the shore of Tripoli. Semper Fidelis signifies the dedication that individual Marines have to corps and country and to their fellow Marines. It's not just a group to join. It's not just even a military. It's a way of life, a way of understanding who and how they serve. And you see, the Marines are trained to improvise, to adapt to overcome any obstacle in whatever situation they are needed. They have the willingness to engage and the determination to defeat the enemy until victory is seized. I think it was interesting, I was called by the Marines yesterday about the color guard, and we just had a funeral earlier today at our other campus where we had a Navy man who was also being honored, 99 years old, served in World War II. And when the Marines called me up to say, well, we're going to be doing the color guard, and I said, yeah, I've, I've, I've done that before, and I said, I'm going to be doing what the Navy goes, no, not the Navy, we're the Marines. <laughs> he goes, we'll be on time, we'll be folding the flag right, we won't be hobbling in and hobbling out, because we're Marines, and we do it with honor. I swear I could hear him salute me on the phone. I don't know, but I was just saying, you know. And I think we have a video today. It's maybe somewhat humorous. Is it, do we think we have it straight or sideways? Do we know, Todd? We're not sure? But this is showing a Marine doing a few push-ups. Let's watch this together. Hi, friends. Uh, it's a little bittersweet that I'm going to start this 22 push-up in 22-day challenge as one of our friends from where we used to live had a son who was a veteran in the U.S. Marine Corps and just took his own life this last week. And so I'd like to bring awareness to 22 veterans each day taking their own life. Uh, and we'll be posting a little bit later on Facebook a link to, uh, for you to be able to take a look and how you can help. So I challenge anyone and everyone uh, to do this 22 push-ups in 22 days. Keep in mind, I've done zero push-ups for, I don't know how long it's been since I've done a push-up, so this is going to be rough. But here we go. It's really rough to do it sideways. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. 13, 14, 50, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22. <laughs> that wasn't bad. That was pretty good. So the Marines were definitely part of Max's sense of honor. He accomplished much there. And I shared with the families a few things that also Max was fond of, his hobbies of hockey, lacrosse, motorcycle, his EDR limited edition, the fact that he was a Vikings fan, 
and I talked to several of you, even in the hallway here today, that he seemed to fix a lot of cars. So I don't know how many he touched, but it seems like I talked to about two or three people in a row that just kept saying, oh yeah, he helped me with my car, or he gave me advice on this car or that car. And I don't think it's any um, coincidence that you have a child named Nova, uh, <laughs> which could have something to do with a, a star, but I, I think it might have something else to do with a car. Um, and of course, many of you know that after he got out of the Marines, he was studying to do gunsmithing as well. When I asked his family what he's passionate about, what brought joy into his life, he said, of course, his family, his friends, many of you who are sitting here today. Did he have any favorite songs? They said just country music and Megan Trainer and some other things they lifted there. He said any favorite mem memories, and there were several that they shared. But the biggest one that it seemed like to come up over and over again was that he always accomplished what he set his mind to. I love the story about how he worked at McDonald's, and next thing you know, he's the manager a month later. Whether he tried out for the Marines, he becomes first in his class. Whatever he set his mind to, he accomplished. He was almost like a Marine before he knew he was a Marine, whether it be in sports, whether it be in hockey, whether it be in lacrosse. If he set his mind to it, he accomplished it. After high school, and he entered the Marine Company, became an honor man in charge of five to seven platoons. He recruited others, and he graduated as an E5. He was a corporal. Those are just accomplishments, but accomplishments mean nothing more than character. Character is what matters in the Marines more than accomplishments. And he served with honor, with integrity, and he did it with what they call Semper Fi. I have a friend who was a Marine, and they have this really weird thing. Maybe some of you know it. Ura, is that correct? <laughs> is there a true Marine out there that can lead that for a little bit? Go ahead. Ura. Can the rest of you try that? Ura. Oh, like you really mean it. Ura. Ura. One more time. Ura. One more time. Ura. See, the Marines said that from the gut out, where they entered into battle, where there was an accomplished man. They would oorah because they wanted them to know that there was an esprit de corps, that there was, was not alone. There was no man left behind. And that's maybe the saddest thing we have to talk about today, is that he didn't finish with his platoon fully. But in that same way, he was not left behind. Because his memory is with you, and you, and you, and all gathered here this day. And the image we have of this of this eagle swooping down. Even though he entered into his life prematurely, he ended his life prematurely, that God did not leave him alone. And I've always said we never know the final thoughts of anyone. We never know the final thoughts of anyone. And I know that some say that he struggled with his faith. I didn't know that personally. But I do know this, that many times when we face death, we also see God. And God sees us. And God is that eagle that's always watching over and always swooping under. My prayer is that that's what happened with him as well. And my last note to leave for you this day is that we all have that same opportunity to allow God to stay over us and watch over us and swoop under us and protect us. My prayer is that you allow the eagle, the symbol of God's love and grace, to watch over your life and to swoop under you and to protect you when you're going through the storms of life. Let us pray. Holy and loving God, we just pray if there's somebody here today that is suffering or struggling, Lord, that you would swoop down and lift them up today. Give them hope. Give them encouragement. If there's somebody, Lord, that needs to know your love, because they don't feel a sense of your presence this day, Lord. I just pray that they would be willing to turn their life over to you. That they'd be willing to admit that they aren't strong enough to handle this on their own. And that they need your wings to swoop down underneath them and to lift them up this day. That they could believe that you are indeed God, the God that saved the world. And if they would just confess that they would want you in their life, that you would enter in and they'd feel the lifting of your wings beneath them. If there's anybody here today that says that prayer, Lord, just allow your Holy Spirit, your Holy Ruah, the breath of God, to breathe into them 
and to give them the true esprit de corps, your Holy Spirit in their life. I pray for this in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. At this time, we're going to have what's known as the naming. Um, Pastor Deb will come forward and share the names of those who are still um, part of the family of God alongside Max. As I was meeting with the family, Pastor Paul and I, and we were taking notes. Um, Pastor Paul kind of filled you in on how busy Max was. 24 years is very short, but I think he lived a full lifetime in 24 years, all the things that he was involved in. Pastor Paul mentioned many of them, hockey, lacrosse, motorcycle, EDR limited edition, Vikings fan, knew a lot about fixing cars, um, gunsmithing. But when we ask the family some of the things that will be missed about Max, I love this. Best smile and laugh. He was a prankster. He was goofy. His favorite color? What was his favorite color, folks? Burnt orange. See, you knew him well. And of course, eagles. He liked eagles. And people thought of him when they saw eagles and will still do, no doubt. The Megan Trainer song, not, not sure I know about that one. I'll have to hear a little bit more on that story. I think he was singing it without a shirt on, picking up somebody from an airport. Mom, is that right? Goofy, epitome of goofy, um, as well as all of his accomplishments. McDonald's manager in just one month. Tells you at a young age, this man was determined to succeed in all that he did. And one of his Successions is your beautiful daughter, Nova Elena, right? Elena? Nova Novella. Anella, that's it. Nova Anella. Absolutely beautiful name, beautiful girl. And so with that, let's list those who are survived by Max. Survived by loving wife, Sarah Willis, daughter, Nova Novella. Father, Brian and Patty Willis. Mother, Stacy and Mark Lodiger. Sister, Mandy and Brandon Markward. Grandparents, Harold and Deb Willis. Gary and Karina Cook. And William and Ginger Maynard. And many beloved aunts, uncles, cousins, and friends. May you rest in peace. Let us pray. Lord, we thank you for your servant, Max Willis. And we thank you for sharing him with us, for all that he has taught us, and for the example he lived, and for the faith that he shared. We give thanks. Touch our broken hearts today as we mourn the loss of one we have loved so dearly. And give us the faith to believe in your promises that you will indeed lift us up on eagles' wings. May we be encouraged with the peace that you have promised. May we be reminded of your presence in our time of grief. We ask that you comfort our loss at this time and be with us today as we pray the prayer you taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. I believe at this time we do have a movie. Is that still, do we have a thumbs up on that? Thumbs down? Thumbs up, I can't see. It's still loading. I guess we're going to be watching it during our supper or luncheon or whatever we call it afterwards. So they're having some what they call buffering problems. I guess that's the terminology they use. So at this time, I invite the family to come forward um, by uh, Max towards the front here. Would you guys mind standing, just coming forward as we do our final prayer? In a few moments, we'll be dismissing after the family. We'll exit first during our closing music. And after they exit, we'd encourage the rest to follow. Our food is down to your uh, right and my left. Um, bathrooms are down that direction. So if you need to use the restroom first, go down that way. If you'd like to get in line for the food, go down that way. Um, We'll be blessing the food before we go after the benediction.
to him who is able to keep from falling, we present to you before his glorious presence without fault and with great joy. To our God and Savior, may you be all glory, majesty, power, and authority be known through Jesus Christ our Lord, before all ages, now, and forevermore. And to your hand we commit Max A. Willis's spirit at this time. Comfort him this day in the bosom of your, of your wings. Lift him up and draw him unto yourself. We pray for these things in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. This time, we encourage the family to exit down the center, and I'll be praying for the food and um, dismissing everyone afterwards. Holy, loving God, we ask that you bless the food, the hands that prepared it, and our fellowship with one another this day as we continue to live on the celebration of life for Max. In your name we pray. Thank you. 